One of the dozens of problems with the Obamacare website is the lack of cybersecurity that's built into the site. Joining me now with tips on how to protect yourself from being hacked while you're signing up for Obamacare is former White House Chief Information Officer and Data Privacy Expert, Teresa Payton. Teresa, nice to have you. Hi, thanks for having me. So let me ask you, are consumers needing to be worried about logging onto the website and, and perhaps giving out information that would be hacked? You know, unfortunately, they do need to be worried. And we've already been told by one white hat hacker who took a look at the site and he found something that's considered sort of the golden rule, which is you do security first. After, you know, before you do that first web page, you do security first. And one of the things he found that's very basic, we're all on the go, we're super busy. We do typos all the time. Mm -hmm. He found that if you typed healthcare semicolon gov instead of healthcare.gov, you went to a fraudster's website. That's considered, that's something, it's so common, actually as its own term, it's called typo squatting. So when things mm. like that are missing, that tells me there's some other more complex things that are probably missing as well. What should people do? Should they just avoid the site altogether? I mean, the president is out there saying, sign up, sign up, get in there quickly. But I think you're saying if you do, you better be careful. What are safeguards people could do to protect themselves if they do have to sign up for insurance? You know, you're absolutely right. I mean, if this were a business, they would, our customers would have left us by now, wouldn't they? Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah so <laughs> one, of the things, one of the things that I would recommend, there's actually two tips, and it's something people can do on the commercial break, actually, or after the show, because we don't want them to miss the show. No, not at all. <laughs> and the first thing I recommend you do, and it's free and easy, is get a new email address that you've never used on your bank accounts, email mm. accounts, social media accounts, the reason being, if your data is compromised, a common tactic of cyber criminals is to take that email address and start going to popular shopping sites and banking sites to try and get into the rest of your life. If you start seeing spam on that email address you're only using with healthcare.gov, you know you've probably been compromised. Then the second piece is people are being tricked every day by fraudsters who are creating these fake ads, they're creating emails with links. Don't start there. Always start at the trusted source. If you don't know if you're supposed to be at your state exchange or at the federal exchange, go to hhs.gov and navigate from there. Those are two things you could do right now during the commercial break or after the show, and they'll protect you. You know, when I think about the people that are going to go on this site, a lot of them may not be that web savvy. You know, you're talking about a lot of people that didn't have insurance before, now they've got to go in and get it. If their identity is stolen, what recourse do they have? Can they sue the federal government? Can they say, okay, I, I've spent you know, $5,000 getting my identity back. You guys need to pay for it. What happens? You know, it's funny that you ask that question because they tell you to actually call them, which is, isn't that where it started to begin with? The yeah. identity theft. So you do need to call them and let them know if your identity has been compromised, but they're, they're called navigators, not investigators. Mm. So they're not going to be able to do an investigation for you. You have to take that accountability yourself. The next step you need to do is go to the Federal Trade Commission, FTC.gov, and go to the, um, the FBI's website, which is called IC3.gov for the Internet Crime Center. You need to file a report there as well as with local law enforcement so you have a record. The next step, don't pause. The next step, you must call your bank accounts and credit card accounts and go ahead and get those accounts flagged so they can't take over your financial life. You know, the sad thing, Teresa, what you've just described is a lot of trouble, a lot of time, a lot of money that a consumer is going to spend because he or she, in good faith, trusted the government. That's what's sad here. And so if a person goes through that process of just trying to follow the law, get health insurance, they could end up losing their identity, a lot of money, a lot of time. This isn't going well, is it? No, and you know, this is actually just the beginning of the story because we already know they're not ready to accept your payments online yet. You have to mail a check in. So that part's still being brought online. I really sort of compare this to if you went to a car dealership today, 2013, and bought the 2013 model, and they handed you a bag of balloons and duct tape, and you said, well, what's this? And they said, well, that's actually your airbag you're going to install yourself. That's really kind of where we're at right now with this. And that's because we skipped that golden rule. Do not build one page until you know what data it is you're protecting and how you're going to protect it. Well, I hope people will pay attention. By the way, Teresa is the author of a book, Protecting Your Online Identity. Are you naked online? Gosh, I hope not. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> uh, so get a copy of Teresa's book. It'll be helpful to you, not just for Obamacare, but any activities online. Teresa, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me.